Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Um, Mac one Juno. And it's a comment on my TikTok live stream replay on YouTube. And they say personal accounts of basic performances helps clarify. Actually in plain, because I'm a grammar tutor, even in plain English, I have to say personal accounts is plural and helps is plural. So in plain fiction English, it would be personal accounts of basic performances help clarify. Help would be singular. Help clarify the reason, purpose, and function for valuable time and effort worth expending. And I do understand what Mac 1 Juno is saying, that people just want to hear personal stories. People like to hear stories. That's why people like Colin David Ivan Colin Miller, Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould are so popular. One of the reasons, not the only reason, one of the reasons is the stories they tell. David Wynn Miller was one of the best storytellers I've ever personally had the pleasure to listen to on the phone. And also, of course, in the videos on YouTube. He's a great storyteller. Russell also tells great stories, very dramatic. Uh, with his ride, his rise and cadence and inflections and stuff in his voice. And uh, Joey John Lester does a pretty good imitation of Russell J. Gould in telling stories. I mean, it's almost a spot-on impression, so kudos to him for that. So I understand that, but I've kept to a certain integrity along the lines of my YouTube channel since February of 2018, where I'm not trying to tell stories. I'm not to, to sell something to you, to get you to believe in me. I don't want to do that. My point is to just put out quality grammar content repeatedly on a consistent basis. And I've done that, I feel, in the over 600, probably closing in on 700 now videos on this channel. So that if someone is drawn to it, they will be drawn to it because of the grammar itself that intrigues them, not because of my stories and what I say. Because my stories literally cannot really be certified by anyone unless I had a witness there with me or I show you the exact paperwork, which is confidential. I do make general references from time to time, Mac 1 Juno, such as I did in this live TikTok stream, but I definitely don't go into details because I want to keep the focus on the grammar not the stories. That way each individual viewer can assess whether they want to learn this or not based upon the content of the grammar and not the content of my story. Next comment comes from pin.rights and they say what is purpose of bioweapon? Save the world by one disbursement. And of course, I responded back, what does that have to do with the video or what does that have to do with grammar? Bioweapons. What, what does that have to do with anything? And uh, they wrote back some nonsense. I mean, nonsense in regards to the context of this channel. And then I said, what? 
you're ignoring the terms and conditions of the comments field? Or let me guess, you didn't even bother to read the comments terms and conditions before you decided to start typing, which is usually the case with a lot of people. They don't even bother to read the rules before they enter a playground. They just go and do whatever they want. And then when they get in trouble or get kicked out, then they're like, well, I didn't know. Come on, man. You're accountable for what you do and knowing what you're about when you're doing it. I mean, the only time you have an excuse or a reason to not know is if you're a child and you don't know what you don't know. But I mean, I just, doesn't everybody know that before you enter someone's house, you, you got to know the terms and conditions, the rules of the house or the store or the military base or the courtroom or the neighborhood. I mean, you got to know these rules. Some places in the world, in big cities, inner cities, you enter a neighborhood, you could get yourself killed without knowing the terms and conditions that go on of what to wear and so on and so forth. So, I mean, ignorance is not a reason. Speaking of weapons, and by the way, no one sponsors this. I'm my own one-man show here. I do everything, shoot everything, edit everything. But I do love bladed objects. Let's put it that, this way. I'm trying going to try and be as banal as possible. And one of those blades that I really love, and again, they don't sponsor this or anything, is called the HR1. Now, yes, I navigate with the three principles of correct sentence structure, balance of honor and grace, position of peace and neutrality, and maintenance of rule one, rule equal. But if an antagonist or a trespasser physically violates those terms and conditions, that's where this little thing comes in. This thing goes very easily onto your waistline, anywhere you want, whether it's um, abdomen, kidney, wherever you want to put it. This can be removed, and this is completely within the bounds of, uh, you know, be, you, you can carry it. No one's going to hassle you for carrying this. But it has this little ring on here, and let me, trust me. If you train with it, and someone's trying to attack you, this will stop them. This will stop them. It's great. It's called the HR1, and it's, and it's from a website called Hard and Ready. Uh, Ryan and Amber run that over there. Good people, and they know how to fight beyond a shadow of a doubt because they do it every day. Just like I know correct sentence structure, they know physical violence. And they teach it to the people that need it the most. And this is one of the products that I do use myself on a daily basis when I go out into the public. Just in case. Just like you got to have the grammar on your tool belt just in case. But you do have to train with it. And it does, if you order it, it does come with a training blade that's not sharp. So you can learn some moves with it. And they have some cool videos and stuff to teach you a couple things. If you don't know anything about knife fighting. So, again, they, they didn't pay me to say that or nothing. It's just my own personal view point of these things. Next comment comes from Ega0117. And they say, why did this Mueller guy make Russell J. Gould a partner? Now, if someone's going to make a comment regarding quantum grammar, correct sentence structure, communication policy, syntax grammar, and then they say Mueller... That tells me exactly where their knowledge level is, meaning they probably have zero knowledge because they don't even know how to spell the guy's name correct. So with a small amount of guessing, you can guess that they mean Miller. And they could actually find the answer to their question if they would go back through the publicly available YouTube videos uh, produced by both those men, all those directors' parties and things like that. And then you can get uh, Russell J. Gould's side of the story during the Reno seminars and the subsequent videos he produced after that. If you want to learn about what happened between the two of them. 
you know, David Whit Miller, who was the teacher and the master, and then Russell J. Gould, who was the student and apprentice. Okay? Now, I do recommend Russell J. Gould videos prior to 2016. Very good stuff if you can find it. I think his people, well, that's a guess on my part, all right? That's an assumption on my part that his people have tried to scrub those things from the internet. Because, well, who else would try and scrub those things? Because he definitely changed his narrative after David passed away and modified the whole thing to something else that doesn't even resemble, really, uh, what David put in place. But very few people know that or even remember that because most of the people that belong to his cult were not around when David was still with us. Another comment from Mac Juno. Mac one Juno, sorry. And they say, without a given purpose that shows itself to be a valuable or important to an individual's life journey, very few cognize the worthwhile value, will not bother to invest beyond initial curiosity. Other uh, responding to what I said about uh, focusing on the grammar rather than telling stories. However, shown examples in life circumstances where use is shown to be applicable and how intimate the application can and will be in daily life, as well as fiction surprise circumstances created for harvesting. Then the 1% of the 1% of the 1% may rise to the 1%, then 3%, then 6%, then 12%. By then the fiction no longer exists. At 3% is where they likely surrender. And most will need assistance of your personal online guidance at some point. Win-win scenario. Well, I appreciate uh, your scenario there, Mac One Juno. What I can humbly recommend to you or suggest to you, if you're open to it, is why don't you learn the grammar, get closure on it, and then you can tell your own personal stories of the things that you did with it, the successes you had, if that's the route you want to go, and then you can increase that percentage yourself. You can go out and do it yourself um, if that's what you're with the volition of doing. But uh, great ideas. Thank you. And then another comment from Mac One Juno, and they say, for the gratitude... By the correct syntax mechanics and by the void correct syntax mechanics. So, friends and neighbors, that is not a correct sentence structure. Because a correct sentence structure always starts with a cause, is followed by a concern. Like a name. For the Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass. For the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. Period. That's how the, it is read. These are original grammar mechanics, as taught by Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller, which I have two or three videos of him actually saying exactly what the concatenation or order of events are, or sequencing of positionals are. And this is not it. It does start with a cause, but then it ends with an authority, but there's no verb there. So it's not a sentence. So if it's not a sentence, it must start with a cause and concern. So it would be for the gratitude of the correct syntax mechanics and of the void correct syntax mechanics. So Mac One Juno, I think, if one were to actually write this incorrect sentence structure, would be saying that the correct syntax mechanics and void correct syntax mechanics are grateful for something. What that is, we don't know. But again, as I said earlier with Mac's comment, Mac, if you just learn the grammar and get closure on it, if you get serious about it, take those steps, put your foot down, commit to it, then you can uh, start towards your goals there that you outlined in uh, your last comment. Great effort. Thank you. Next comment comes from Dominic D'Angelo481, and they say, this was extremely concise and helpful. The last three or four videos, four to eight minutes long with the whiteboard, have been the most informative and very concise. I rewatched multiple times and digested so well today I called out the LY in lovely as a particle of negation before you said it. That's impressive to me. I see it as a small victory, but a reassurance I'm maintaining more knowledge than I originally believed. Well, that's very awesome, Dominic D'Angelo. And that is... Uh, impressive that you're able to pick out particles of negation by memory keep studying keep coming back 
I'm glad you like those videos. A lot of people do seem to like those videos, the whiteboard videos. So I will definitely continue to make a few of those every now and then. Thanks again. And the last comments come from April Juanita Boyd-Smith, a member. Thank you very much for your membership. And to all the members out there, thank you for your support. And another one from Mac One Juno, and they say, great example. Correct freedom and fairness does not yet exist in the USA. I suggest PDF book found on the net, Fruit from a Poisonous Tree, subtitle secrets that were never to be revealed. Also, why you need to know correct sentence structure are at risk until you do. Well, in the corporation known as USA, I agree. Freedom and fairness never existed. But I have to think that freedom and fairness did exist in the, Amer in the Americas before the settlers came. Meaning there was freedom for everybody. There were all, the people that were already on the Americas were free. As to whether it was fair, I don't know. I suppose you had to navigate to the best of your knowledge, best of your knowledge and skill. And that's how it went. Kind of like now, actually. <laughs> But let's take a look at what these people are commenting on. And I'm going to switch over to the internet and take a look at it. It was a picture that I posted in uh, my community section where I showed how the fiction tells you right in front of your face that a vowel in front of a consonant means no and that there is no freedom or fairness in the past tense United States of America. And this comes from the Michigan Attorney General, A.G. A. Nessel, I think is their name. And it says, the Supreme Court rightly upheld the ruling out of North Carolina that declared the independent state legislature theory a historical nonsense. Okay, so that's verification by the fiction that a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word means no. And I know people are going to say, didn't David say it's one vowel in front of two consonants? I add this to the evidence shelf, A historical. They didn't need to put the A there. But if you look that up, you will see that A is a negative condition of state. And there's only one vowel following it. So that would be basically read independent state legislature theory, not historical nonsense. Non-historical nonsense is how it would be read, basically. Because A is no contract. Now that's kind of overkill in a plain English sense. They could have just said theory, historical nonsense, because it's nonsense. But it's not historical nonsense, so that's kind of a dichotomy there. But you see what I'm saying. Down in front of a consonant means no, period. Neither the law in practice nor spirit, nor neither the law in practice and spirit, nor our continuous endeavor toward a free and fair democracy. So they are endeavoring continuously towards a free and fair democracy. It doesn't exist. Has never existed. They're still working towards it. They're telling you right to your face. You ain't free and this ain't fair. Period. What can you do about it? Well, one thing you can do is learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar through the 600 plus videos on this YouTube channel. Or if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.